There are no slides for this half hour, but the name of the presentation is, um, is we don't need no stinking badges. Did I get that right? <laughs> okay. Right. And what we're going to do is just have a review of the Monero Village uh, Pico's badge and what it does, what to expect from it, maybe a bit of history about how to use it. Um, just the basics, right? Um, so, and I can just say that, um, I can just say that there are three official versions which were produced. I have four here simply because I didn't want to remove one and then have this lopsided all the time. So I made a single green one Christmas Irish Howard version. Um, that's why there's four. And this is kind of the showcase model because I've been kind of demonstrating them and some people want to see the differences. Um, we have, uh, we have uh, carried out most of the pre-sales distribution and there are some more uh, for sale at some time today. Um, so uh, what's the announcement there? Um, we're, we're not sold out of the regular batch. That's this orange one. Don't worry about that. There will be more tomorrow as well. Uh, I just have some reworking to do. So if at any time you come and you want to buy a badge and you hear that, oh, there's no more, it, it just means you need to come back in three or four hours, in two hours or tomorrow. And don't worry, there's, there's, I think there's plenty. Um, the other two, the, on top, um, they are kind of sold out. If you are a community member and you have wanted to purchase one but you haven't contacted me yet, then you should do it immediately because there's just a handful that I've reserved for you, okay? I hope that was clear. Um, and as far as it goes, so I have, what, uh, 20 minutes left? Uh, there are, let me show a picture of this. The back of the badge, the back of the badge has a QR code on each badge. You can point your camera at that with a, a QR identifier software. And um, oh, if I turn it over, you get feedback. Um, and the QR code points to uh, an online uh, web application, which was created by our friend Sirhack, which is very, very good. I'll show, show you what it looks like. Um, it's simply this here. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Um, and so this is it, castello.org um, specs. And and I'll kind of do a shortcut here. This works very well on mobile as well. And then you can choose one of them. Uh, the one with no colors here, that's the regular badge. It's quite inexpensive. There's a, a blue colored one, which is called the Alien, because we didn't have any more than a dumb name for that. And there's a, the orange colored badge is called the Boss Badge, because it has kind of an authoritative um, flashing animation. Uh, and I'm going to switch microphones. Can I do that? Show it. Is it a good idea if I switch? Okay. All right. We'll keep trying. So there are those three variants, and you can see how they look here, and you can see how uh, Serhak's web application um, shows them on the screen. You can go to this URL now. It's live, but it's not complete. So I'm just going to click on the regular original badge. That's the one without colors. It brings up here. I think you can zoom in and out with some gestures. It's, it's good enough for that. And here there's a slider. Um, so uh, what's this here? I don't even really know how this works. <laughs> um, OK. And once you click on this, for example, let's move all the way to the bottom you can see that there are a few different components that are highlighted there. Uh, this is kind of nonsense. There's going to be better documentation, but if I click on, the, on that row, on that uh, array of LEDs, then it should give me some explanation here. Unfortunately, it says no additional documentation for the LEDs. Uh, it's kind of small. I don't think, I, maybe I can increase the size. 
Uh, okay, I can't increase this size, but as you see, it goes off the screen then. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a good idea. Um, yeah, so, okay, I guess we'll, we'll increase the size a bit. So if you go to the left, there's a menu interface there. Uh, there's a button which, which is called the animation button. So if you push that, just watch now. We have the authoritative uh, boss badge style here with the red and white uh, and, and blue flashes. I'll change the animation by pushing the button and then it moves to a different animation. I'll change it again, moves to a different animation. The boss badge is the only one that has this authoritative uh, animation. They're all a bit different. It's controlled by the firmware. And if you find that you have a badge and you just push the button and nothing happens, it's because there's a sampling of this button at the end of the animation, which takes about a half second, almost a full second. So if you're not just right on time, you see how I'm pushing that and nothing happens? The same animation is, is, is um, appearing? Well, it's because I haven't pushed it long enough, so I'm just going to push the button for a long time, and then the animation will change to the next one. In fact, it will cycle if I just leave the button held down. So that's kind of one trick that some people sometimes miss. It. They think their button is not working correctly. In some cases, the button really isn't working correctly. We've found some problems with that, and I've replaced all of the boards which have problems with that. But in case I missed one, then you can come up and, and tell me about that, please. Um, so that's this animation button. Uh, there is a antenna, which you can see it on the front. It's embedded on the back of the board, but it does show you on the front of the board where it should, where it, where it should be in case you see where it says NFC there. Then you turn the, I can't turn the animation over, I mean, the web app over, but can turn this over, and then you can see the antenna. It's a, a trace antenna right on the PCB on the back. Works very well. And all you need to do to test that, I'll show you how, We're using a real telephone. I mean, it's kind of small for you, I'm so, I apologize for that. But if you just squint, and kind of if you're in the front row. Um, so I just have an a Android telephone, and I'm going to push one of the radio buttons to connect the EEPROM, which is over here, with the antenna. Yeah, this is a really nice application. So I'm going to push one of these buttons in order to connect this EEPROM, which is called U2, with the antenna. Let's see what happens. First of all, if I do nothing at all, if I do, if I do nothing at all, oops. if I do nothing at all, usually when you tap a NFC tag to a device like a telephone, it registers, right? But I have not connected the antenna to to the EEPROM, which is kind of a defense against opportunistic attacks. If you lay your phone down on a table or any NFC tag, especially a passive NFC device. Uh, a table may have an embedded active NFC circuit in it. They will steal your data, whatever is on your NFC tag, right? This is called an opportunistic data attack or passive data theft. And um, we protect against that by forcing the user to actually push onto the button. So now I will, do, I will repeat the test, but I'll push on the button. And you see at the bottom something appeared there because it's detecting that a tag is being placed on the back of the telephone. And because it's a, a type 4 NFC tag, it really can hold anything. Uh, I think there's about 20 profiles, or well, maybe 15 official ones, and there's a, an additional five or so which other application developers have, uh, have uh, added to the official one. Um, the, there is a disclaimer uh, paper that comes with the badge. You can read a few things on there, frequently asked questions. It tells you a bit about the NFC standard, what RFID frequency it uses, and so on. Um, but the basic idea is that you can use the badge with a telephone, for example, as long as it has a built-in NFC circuit. There are a number of other advanced devices, um, yeah, well, all over the world that use NFC. Right? Our good friend, um, M2049R, I think, 
24 Niners. <laughs> uh, he developed, um, he implemented it into Monterugio just to support our badges. So if you really want to experiment, if you really have almost no funds at all, or if you're really happy to live on the edge and be a risky user, then you can do some experiments with Monterugio and uh, the badge. So now you know what you can do with the badge. It has a, a, a light um, loop animation. You can affect that by pressing on the animation button to change the animation. And on the other side of the badge, um, it has the NFC circuit, which you can press on either of those two buttons to selectively connect the antenna to one of the two electrons. One EPROM can hold, for example, your V card, and the other EPROM can hold your uh, telephone number or URI. It's up to you. You have to program it yourself. If you want to know how to program that, the way I do it, I just uh, use my telephone and I download uh, an Android app to take something that has to put C in there. Uh, I'm sure there's quite a lot of them. The one that I've been using is C Tools. Seems to work quite well. Um, right, and that's the NFC portion. Uh, once you look through here, you're going to see a lot of things that are well documented. Um, there is a power button on the side. I think that's self-explanatory here. Um, the batteries that we're distributing with the badges are, are kind of not low quality, but not high quality either. It's impossible for us to test them all. And so we assume that, that although a fully fresh, uh, high quality battery lasts for about four days, that you're only gonna get about two days, maybe even one and a half days worth of life with these batteries. So just be careful with that. If you do want to use this single battery for your, ex um, for your entire DEF CON experience, then you probably wanna turn it off once in a while, maybe just use it in the evening when the party is and everyone's lit up. Uh, but we do recommend that you have a second battery if you really want to make sure you have a, a, a backup source of energy in case the battery we supply you with um, you know, goes out and is drained after, say, Saturday, tomorrow afternoon. So you should have a second battery, possibly. It's up to you, really. Um, what, else, what else can I say about this? Uh, there are two programming interfaces. So, by the way, our friend Sirhack doesn't really know what a resistor is, so he wrote transistors on here. <laughs> there's a few mistakes like that. Don't worry, I'm going to fix them. And um, there's a couple programming interfaces. If you've ever used an Arduino before, um, you maybe have been exposed to the AVR 8-bit uh, microcontroller um, instruction set. Uh, and so this is, uh, uh, it's not a, it's not a AT mega, but it's an AT tiny uh, MCU. So it uses an AVR 8-bit instruction set as well, which means uh, that if you want to program it, if you don't like these animations, the light animations, you want to put some other, your own on there, you can do that by programming using a Arduino style connector, which is not populated. It's this one here. Let me let me see, not that one, but uh, what is this? Arduino, if your interface, but I don't see it in the list. It must be up here somewhere. Here it is. Yeah. So that's, I don't have a laser, but I think it's clear enough. It's those very large um, holes. There's six holes. And I actually have some header pins for the more adventurous of you. If you know how to program um, MCUs and you want to try doing that, then I can give you some header pins and you solder them on at the hardware hacking village or something, and then you can try programming your board. I think tomorrow there is a two-hour workshop that's with, which um, will learn how to program our badges. There's not much you can do with them. You can't connect microphones or sensors. You can't do serial exchanges. You don't have serial buses like SPI or I squared C. It's a very simple microcontroller, what's on here. So you have some GPIOs, which are digital only, which means um, they, uh, they send 3.3 volt signals out, um, square wave, or uh, 
read a 3.3 volt signal. You can do some programming, but it's very, very uh, primitive, right? And um, as a last uh, demonstration, because I think we're pretty well through the, the features, if you if you don't understand NFC, you've never used it before, then it's nice. There's no risk in using this. Just do the, the not risky things. Uh, start with V cards and URLs. Some people are using this for SSH keys and GPG keys. You can do that, but it's kind of the next level up. Because if you lose that data for some reason, if you generate a new GPG key, you start using that. You don't have a backup because you have it on your badge. And then something happens to your badge. It's stolen, or you wipe the EEPROM or whatever. Then you've just lost your GPG key. It's just not very nice, right? So be careful for the badges. They're powerful. Um, Last thing, I'm just I'm not going to make a new program, but I'll show you what I use for programming. Uh, and basically, it's called Atom. It's called Platform I.O. Maybe some of you know that. You can program them with the Arduino IDE as well, but I'm more experienced with Platform I.O., so that's what I'm using. And it begins here. It starts... Here. I'm not sure. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. I can't demonstrate this because I'm using a different account. The present. I'm using the present account. You see? Yeah. So what I usually do. This will be obvious tomorrow as we do the two-hour workshop. There's no time now, but with two hours we can do quite a bit, and we'll do some programming and testing demonstrations, and you can even program your own chip with your own firmware if you like. Um, that's the very beginning. This is the ID. Start typing some code, AVR code here, you know, hello world, and so on. And, um, and then manipulate the GPIOs to make flash on and off. We do some Charlie plexing so that we can use more LEDs than there are GPIO pins, things like that. And uh, after we have compiled the source code in the usual way, uh, then we flash it using AVR Dude, which is a command line program. As, as you can imagine, there are many different ways to do this, but um, this is AVR Dude, and this is my favorite method of programming the MCU using uh, firmware that we have compiled using Platform IO. So that was a world uh, of a mouthful. Um, I know that it's a bit difficult to understand if you've never programmed an MCU, but that's what the, the workshop is for tomorrow. I've just basically showed you the first two steps that I do. I use Platform IO to write the code and compile it using GCC AVR because it's not uh, Intel instruction set, so we have to use a different um, compiler for that. And then once I have the compiled firmware, I send it to the device using this AVR Dude software, and there's a special cable for that as well. And that goes full loop back to these two interfaces. This is where you connect to the MCU. This is an SPI interface, and that's what I said before, the six uh, large holes, and the second one, which is identical, it's just connect interface. Right, so there's just five minutes left, um, but I would welcome any questions about the badge. Um, any questions? Maybe I was very thorough. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, okay, the question is, um, I think, I think you're not talking about pro, uh, profiles. I think the question is, how much storage can these badges hold? Is it a megabyte? Is it one byte or something in between? The answer is, um, the regular, uh, the ones that are still available, uh, they're very inexpensive, by the way, uh, $25, and that's why we're using low-rated uh, uh, chipsets and EEPROMs and ICs for them, and that's why they can store only two kilobits of information, which means uh, 256 bytes, right? So some people say, oh, that's quite a lot for NFC, that's all I need, that's a standard amount, and, but really it's not very much. 
If you have a URI, you know, something you type in the browser, that's going to be something like, I don't know, 40 bytes, 20 bytes, something like that. So it's plenty for that type of application. But if you're doing 4096-bit RSA keys and so on, I think it won't work for that. On the other hand, um, the Alien and the Boss badges have identical um, NFC EPROMs on there, and they are much larger. They are 64 kilobits. So that means you have eight kilobytes of uh, storage. And don't forget there's two EPROMs on each badge. So uh, you're not going to want to split your data in half, but if you have, but it's common to put more than one type of data, um, kind of multiplex it on a single NFC tag. And you don't have to do that in this case because you have two on the badge. Right? As far as profiles go, you didn't ask a question, but I find it interesting, so I'm just going to, if I can quickly find an application and see what the um, uh, profiles are, which I was talking about. And because you can't see the screen, I'll just read them off. I'm going to make a new data set, and I can choose, and these are all standard profiles. Text, which is agnostic data, just in text form. URL or URI is a second profile. A user defined URL URI, I'm not sure what that is. A search, I don't know what any of these are, sorry. A search is a profile. Social network, video, uh, an, an archi archive, an application URI, email, contact, telephone number, SMS, a place, uh, a user defined place. I'm translating from German, so. A user defined place, an address. Um, uh, um, um, seal address, um, a uh, uh, seal address, um, target address, I guess, um, a, a search or a location search, a street view, an, an, an emergency information, and Bluetooth URI, a, a W, a Wi Fi address, and data, agnostic data. So there's all these things you can do. Any last question before we wrap up? Do you have a question? <laughs> can you connect two badges to each other? You can if they're DEF CON badges. <laughs> but, okay, so the question is, can you connect two badges to, to each other? And I think we're talking still about the village badge. Because they are passive NFC circuits, they don't have any energy. In fact, if I remove the battery, I can still use the NFC side. So if you think along with me, then, you, then that implies an answer, doesn't it? Because at least one of the two devices, like I demonstrated before, the telephone must, have, must be powered, must have some battery, some voltage, because it's going to transfer energy to the badge to the NFC circuit so that the, the circuit can work. And that means that two badges placed uh, next to each other uh, will do nothing. There's no energy anywhere for, uh, to supply them with energy. So that does not work. Um, just the same as if you have a library card with an NFC tag inside and your student card with an NFC tag inside, you put them next to each other, nothing happens. Right? It's always one active circuit, like a telephone, and one library card or whatever else passport, these kind of things with the reader. The reader always supplies energy wirelessly to the NFC circuit. So I think we're out of time. Thanks so much for coming. What's next, Rebar?